What's going on everyone? This is Dustin with Electrician U. Got Don Metcalf here. Um, introduce yourself. Brag about yourself a little bit. Ah, brag. <laughs> brag. No, no, my name's Donnie. Uh, I've been an electrician for 20, 28 years. Love it. Can't imagine doing anything else. It's the greatest, the greatest trade in the world. I think, uh, I think electricians are just the biggest, baddest <laughs> thing. I, I do. I know I'm biased, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but love it. Love it. Well, we're uh, like you were an instructor for a while. Like, where have you worked, and what kind of stuff have you done? Uh, I've worked m most, almost all of it's been in commercial, industrial, big, big commercial, big projects, um, high rises, schools, um, apartments, th things of that nature. Uh, worked on a few, uh, couple of prisons, so big, big projects. Uh, all the way from I spent, I was probably going on 10, 12 years in California. You know, really? I've, I've kind of really been been all over and in between. Uh, lately, over the past probably seven years, I got into instructing just because I, I I dug giving back and teaching younger kids coming up. Yeah, it's a great. It's it's just it's awesome to give back. You know, I was I was blessed through my apprenticeship and and even past that of having just great instructors or great mentors teach teaching me how how to and how not to do things. Yeah, and. I, I don't know. I, I kind of stumbled in into a, a position where I was uh, uh, allowed to teach, and I man, I fell in love with it. That was just awesome. Yeah. Did you like? Did you like ever get to the point where you were teaching and you missed being in the field, or were you at oh, that no. point you were just ready to? No, be no, out? no, no, no. It's too hot out there, and too cold out there, and the stuff's too heavy. In Texas. No, no, yeah. no, 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 I'm good. Yeah. So, what was the difference? Were you in like Northern Cali? Uh, a little, a little bit in central. Most of all of it's in uh, Southern California. Okay, but so still hot as fuck. Oh, yeah. all the time. Oh yeah, I'm plenty, plenty warm. Yeah. What was the difference out there in working? Like I know you guys had Cal OSHA and stuff like that, but just as an electrician, was it more fun here, or how was it different? Oh, it's definitely more cutthroat out there. Definitely yeah. more cutthroat. If you're standing still long enough, someone freaking behind <laughs> will crawl up over your back and take a job. So yeah. you better watch out. No, but it's uh, it, it it's a lot funner here. It's a lot more laid back. Everyone's the blue collar community really cares about itself. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we tend to take care of ourselves before anything else, and, and you don't don't really see that on the on the coast as much. Yeah, I found. And it's probably really highly unionized out there, right? Uh, yes, yes. Is that everywhere in Cali? Um, union? The IBW's got a pretty good, pretty good stranglehold in California. Um, the closer you get to like Los Angeles, they're they're bigger. The, the further away you get from LA, um, so we'll we'll say the big cities: San Diego, Los Angeles, Air, Sacramento areas like that. It, it's really big. You go to New York, they're really big. Atlantic City, they're really big. But uh, you get here uh, in the middle. Uh, we'll say here in the middle of the of the, the continent, and or in this day and age, the unions don't really hold as much power as they used to it, it used to be that's just how it was done now companies have have learned you know to, to pay their help better to have better uh, benefits for their help and that really kind of took some leverage away from what you would get in the ibw not that there's anything wrong with that both my granddad's were in the union my old man was in the union it just didn't never appeal to me yeah, and it seems like the places where it's massive population centers is where they're mm -hmm. most present at like here in austin there's I don't know any union electricians I and mean, there's like what 1500 companies around here and there might be 30 of them right. that are in the union it's just a really small presence but they still do a lot of the really big work a lot of the high rises yep. um, hospitals government stuff uh, that's what the union does but I've just never even had an opportunity to get into the union everybody that I've met was like what's the union you know um, but yeah I don't have a preference for it either way I hear I did a, a episode with uh, Wayne Robert or Wayne Robinson, Wayne Robertson, Wayne Robinson. Am I off the screen? Oh shit! Well, let me let me scoot a little closer to you. <laughs> you were a little bit. You were like, like where's half your head? <laughs> um, but this this yeah. guy's been. Donald a little bit too. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, we're figuring this out. First time we've done this. <laughs> um, but he was saying like he's been an inspector. He was in the trades for like 50 years and okay. did inspecting, did teaching. He was a chief inspector. And he's like, you know, I will tell you there is no difference from an inspection standpoint at all. He said that both union and non-union, there's terrible electricians. Oh, yeah. And there's great electricians. 
Um, so it just kind of makes me laugh, like this whole union versus non-union debate. It's just a bunch of bullshit. It's, you know, I, I in California, they were, they were, like I said, a lot stronger. And some of the companies I worked for, you know, they were, they were out gunning for us, uh, you know, and I just never understood it. You know, I'm, I'm there to feed my family, same as you, same as everybody else. Mm-hmm. And what's, what's the difference? You work for company A, I work for company B. There's no, there's no, we're, we're, we're in it for our customers' good. I, and I want to feed my family. That's that's yeah. literally that's, everything else. That's, just yeah. fuck off. That, that's it. That's it. So <laughs> yeah. I, I never understood it. But hey, you know, they want to do it. Go for it. Yeah. Well, and I see benefits both ways. Like I really, I really do see like the structured education that goes into uh, the union programs as a positive thing. Um, but a lot of non-union companies use things like the IEC or use other mm-hmm. apprenticeship programs for the same kind of thing. So. I think like just education anywhere you can get it is a really good thing. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, you, you get down to just the, the nuts and bolts of it. It's, it's Fords and Chevys and you know Toyotas yeah. and Nissans. That's, that, that's it's, it's just a different, <laughs> a a different vehicle for the same thing. That's you know? a good way of thinking about it. That's funny. Um, what's your favorite stuff like of everything you've done? Wow. Um, anything production-wise, I love to do. Uh, if if I could if I could produce bleeding sweating just uh, materials flying I mean just smoke coming out of that was that was that was my greatest thing I just anything production whether it's you know hanging warehouses full of light fixtures or, or roping in a series of rooms uh, just in, anything where I could produce okay. at the end of the day just uh, you know it's like wow you sit back and go holy crap that yeah. just, that it started just, out with nothing and now there's a whole bunch of shit done yeah it actually was. changed matter on the planet yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you may walk away, you know, bruised, battered, and bleeding, but at the end of the day, you know, man, I, I got it. I feel, yeah. I feel good. Yeah. I feel good, man. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff, too. I think uh, my favorite was always troubleshooting and just figuring problems out. Um, something about that, like, linear thought and having to find different variables and find unknowns to be able to come up with a known or have, like, some kind of educated guess and sitting and talking with a bunch of people that know a lot and nobody really knows what's going on. You're like, you really have to just try to figure problems out. That was some of my favorite stuff. So the service work I loved, but I also got tired of every day running into a fucking problem. It's oh, like yeah. All that you're doing is running into a fire. Well, that's it. <laughs> every single day <laughs> you don't run across something that's clean and pretty and easy to work on. It's like restaurants with like nasty fucking Ebola eggs oh. in the behind the machine. I, there's a lot of restaurants here in town that I will never go to again. Oh my God. And it sucks because I've eaten at them so many times and it's like, I was a chef for a long time. So my, how I work in kitchens and everything, just seeing some of this stuff, I was like, oh my God. Like you're, you're making, you're making like diseases grow right now. You're not doing anything about it. But yeah, uh, other things were like working in, um, big box stores that have chicken mm. and then like you know you got to move the chicken around to get like uh to a plug or something like that and then the tr- the chicken shit like just droops down and you get all this goo all over you and i had one drop in my ear one day oh it was man. like oh dude it's the nastiest shit ever and i threw my fucking tools down i was like fuck this shit I'm out. and i walked out <laughs> oh man i was so mad so i hated stuff like that about the service side of things but overall i think that was that was the best. I, I spent I spent years years in restaurants. That's the first uh, the first electrical industry I got into was remodeling restaurants. So we traveled around mo- mostly on the the West Coast, but uh, California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, uh, yeah, you know Nevada and, and Arizona. We just we remodeled restaurants, and it was man, I mean 90, 100, 110 hours a week. It's not not uncommon at all for you know two three months on end. Boy, come yeah. on. <laughs> Dude, and every restaurant, they everything's so packed tightly because they have no square footage to spare on anything, and they're always trying to get away with like the the cheapest price oh, yeah. that they can to oh, get yeah. the most use out of the space. And so, like running conduit, just all of it, all working in restaurants sucks. That's a different. It's a different thing. It's good that it's good that it's behind me. It's yeah. behind me. <laughs> well, I like all the Ansel systems and you know just dealing with. Um, the makeup air and the, there's it's fun working on the equipment that's in kitchens but um just being in that environment i don't miss it at all mm. but i did like uh, i did a lot of custom homes like where i started out was doing large-scale custom homes 
um, and that just being an artist and like getting to see how these wealthy people that had to been cool it was way cool that had to be yeah these guys all treat you like you're fucking nothing oh, yeah. you yeah. know especially the, the more money they got <laughs> but it's just really cool to see what people can do in a home and I liked hanging fixtures and chandeliers and all that stuff and then I don't know, I got probably like six years in, and I was like, if I never hang another ceiling fan in my fucking life, it'll be too soon. <laughs> <Good> to <go. laughs> yeah. oh, Jesus. You know, I, I always, uh, when I had to run service, when I was when I was an apprentice, uh, touch, touching on what you're saying, though, that they, people treat you like dirt, you know, but the only way I could get past that was was to look at him and, and think, man, y'all called me. Yeah. You, you need me here. I don't, I don't need you i'll have another call yeah. as soon as i leave here and hop in the van and go somewhere else you know you need me you know and, and that always that always made it good for me to be able to get by and and to yeah. just you know i may have to go use the servants entrance in the back and come in yeah but but still man you you need me and there was a some semblance of i don't know honor and integrity in that i could i could go home at the end of the day and sleep knowing yeah. that man I, I i did what i did what you couldn't do so we're, we're good you know, yeah. we're, we're good. So. Yeah, you may be a doctor, but yep. you had to fucking call. Exactly. Me. Don't forget that. Yeah, you had to call this, this you know, blue-collar worker because you couldn't make it happen. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't, I, that's that's why, you know, we were at, uh, where, what is today? Today's Monday. So we were at dinner yesterday with uh, with some friends of ours, and he was just going off on, on a rant about, oh, this plumber came by the house, and he... He was only there half an hour. He charged me two hundred and something bucks, and I'm like, "Well, what what did he do? He did, you know, this, this, and this." And well, could you could you make it work? No, no, that's why I had to call the plumber. Well, then it's not two hundred bucks, not well spent, right? It's two hundred dollars well spent. If you, it wasn't working, you called him. He showed up. Two hundred bucks later, it's working. Yeah. So that's that's what we do. Um, you know, I don't I don't feel bad for it. <laughs> yeah, man, and I always found that so silly that there's kind of a there's this idea from talking to your buddies about what certain kinds of work should cost. You know, like I've heard people be like, well, this electrician only charged a hundred dollars an hour and you're going to charge $200 an hour. Like that's not fair. And it's like, well, this guy probably does a hundred dollars an hour worth like type of work. And this guy does $200 worth of work. And he's each person is, is going to charge whatever they think their value is and what they can provide. And, and probably a little more if they're super busy and they just don't want to do the work that you're asking them to do. They're going to give you a higher price. But there's no two companies that charge the same thing. And so to think that there's like this flat rate that certain work has to cost, you know, is silly. No, I, I wholeheartedly agree. You know, it's you're going to pay this or you're going to pay that. I mean, if it's what's that adage, that three way adage, you know, if it's if it's fast, if it's fast and cheap, it won't be good. If it's cheap and good, it won't be fast. It, you know, and then there's one more. I, I can't remember yeah. all of them, but 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 it's you get what you pay for with yeah. that. You, you know, if if oh, I I know an electrician will do that for twenty bucks an hour. More power to him. Ha, yeah. Have at it. You're you're gonna get what you pay for there. Yeah. And chances are, I'll probably be back in a few weeks or maybe a week to fix what he did for you and then you're gonna then you're gonna pay me my my money that happens so often oh Oh, Oh, my god i can't tell you how many people i've had to go back and fix stuff that was quoted cheaper Mm -hmm. or was quoted by somebody that wasn't an electrician and that's why they quoted it cheaper or the uh the husband fixes those are my favorite oh my husband's just gonna do this all right see you in a few Uh, weeks exactly exactly. (laughs) that's that's you know it's there's I, I don't agree on over completely overcharging unless, like you said, you're so busy and look, I'm just going to throw the number out there. Well, if you're dumb enough to take it, I'm dumb enough to do it if that's what you want to pay for it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not a big proponent for overcharging. You just charge, charge, you know, the fair market rate, you know, whatever, whatever the metrics I use to come up with, with my dollar amount or project amount number, that's, that one's on me. So mm-hmm. whatever's fair to me, if you're willing to pay it, then hey, man, and if not, you're more than welcome to go with somebody yeah, else. This is what I yeah, want. This, this is what, this is what makes it work for me. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm good. With that. Yeah. And most of the time, the prices are talked about ahead of time. Though they should be. You know, like this is this is our rate. This is kind of roughly what we think it's going to cost to do it. And we'll kind of break into it and let you know what it's going to be. But like a lot of people act so surprised when it comes down to the end. And it's like, that's how much money this is going to cost. Because they always want quotes over the phone. And they're like, oh, I don't have a, you know, my plug's not working. And then you get out there and you realize their entire service needs to be rebuilt. Exactly. And like, that's the problem. And um, that was another thing when I was doing LiveWire, I got in trouble for 
quoting over the phone, not in trouble, I got myself into shitty situations trying to quote over the mm. phone and then getting out to a job and being like, fuck, this is gonna be twice as much as I told them. And then having to backpedal from that. Oh yeah. Ugh. I don't miss that part nope. of it though. I don't no, miss sir. the, did you ever have your own company? Uh, yes, it, it wasn't it wasn't strictly electrical. My father and I owned a, biz, a remodeling business up in Dallas for years, well, 15 years ago. Okay. So yeah, I've 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 bitten off more than I can chew. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that's not that that should be this. And you get in there, you start tearing stuff out, and you like you said, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It all goes downhill. Yeah, I don't miss that at all. I don't miss the uh, running the company and getting phone calls at like 11 o'clock at oh. night on a Saturday night. And just endless texts and. Ugh. Now we live in we th this day and age. Uh, I think it's a great where we live um, and when we live. I mean, there's technologies out there. Uh, you can you can go look at, at YouTube and, and different different vehicles to to learn information. And if you got an electrician with some with some gumption behind them, they'll they'll go research stuff themselves. I mean, yeah. it, kind of like we did, you know. I mean, back when way back when in the dark ages when I was coming up, I mean, way back when, you know. Um, but we used to read books, you know, because we didn't, computers were there, but the internet was, was still relatively new. Um, and and it, it wasn't, we didn't have all the stuff that we do now. But but now, I mean, hell, you can, even Greenly, I think they've got those uh, QR codes on a lot of their, um, like on triple nickels or table benders, they'll have a QR yeah. code. You can take your dang phone over there, you can bust the QR code, and it'll bring up instructions on how to use it. Yeah, that's Dude, amazing. <laughs> that's freaking awesome. If every man. piece of equipment had that, <laughs> you know, I mean, how seriously, great. how great is that? Because I, up until then, you know, you wanted to use a table bender, you better know what you're doing. I mean, you, you better have spent, you know, months on that table bender, otherwise you're going to corn door some pipe. You're, you're yeah. going to do it. Now, I mean, it just things are so easy and it's so readily available and multiple platforms. As I, I think, just a great time, a great time that we live in to be able to give back and to teach and to instruct. And, and frankly, it's a, it's a duty of mine, of yours, of every electrician to teach down to, to, to the guys that are coming up. I mean, I didn't yeah. roll out of the womb knowing everything about electrical work, absolutely not. I had great teachers, great instructors, great mentors mm -hmm. that taught me what to do and what not to do. So it, it's, I, I think it's a torch that every electrician should carry. And we're starting to see really over the past probably 10, 15 years, a decline from that. And, yeah. and we're all standing here wondering what the hell's going on. Why is the trade suffering? Well, for one thing, you know, that you're not teaching as much as we used to. I mean, we used to have, you know, days on the projects where it was teaching days, you mm -hmm. know, or you'd take bundles of pipe home. And I remember practicing bending conduit on my damn porch. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, a bundle of half inch EMT and the bender out of the gang box was nothing you know yeah. nowadays okay it costs a lot more to, you know. yeah. but I, I i think we need to get back to that of, of just just more hands-on teaching um the guys coming up because they the, i i found in in teaching with the iec that believe it or not the kids want more they, they want more hands-on i mean i have been verbally told by students but from polling them you know what do you, what do you guys want more of? We, we want more hands-on we want it yeah that's what the guys want well, give them what they want yeah, you know, I agree. I agree. You have to like so much is taught right now where it's just up on screens mm -hmm. and s like so many hours are put in for so long with just stuff up on screens. And that makes sense to me when you're out in the field working every day. But a lot of people are going through trade schools that can't get into an apprenticeship or there's like a three year wait for them to get into apprenticeship. So they need to start doing something and go into a trade school where they're just sitting there in a classroom listening to a guy talk on a screen is really a huge waste of their mind right. because Absolutely. by the time they get into the apprenticeship they still got to wear tools and they still have no fucking clue what they're doing right you're you're correct i i, I think we need to spend more time on collectively as as a group as a i don't know as, as an electrical family just as an industry hands-on teaching the guys more you yeah. know boot, boots on the ground teaching not just like you're saying up on a screen that's all good and well if you want to teach you know certain things you know like theory um, you know different stuff about wire or amperage okay things like that fully understand but when you're when you're down into bending pipe and pulling wire and terminating things man you've got to use your two hands yeah you have to do you see a difference from when you were uh, like a fresh journeyman or even when you were an apprentice were there more 
unskilled people around on average per job than there are now? Like, like, is it kind of one guy with one helper now and it used to be a lot more? No, just, uh, I, I think it really was actually the inverse. Um, when I was coming up, it wasn't always one for one. It wasn't always one apprentice for one journeyman, but a lot of times it was pretty close. Mm. So if you had a journeyman, you had an apprentice in his back pocket. Yeah. And if, depending on the company that you worked for, a lot of times, you know, if you spent two years at one company, you may have been with your journeyman for two years. And today you guys might be installing light fixtures. Tomorrow you might be running conduit. The next day you may be out digging ditch. Whatever you're doing. Yeah. But that was your journeyman, and you went with him, and he, he taught you his way of, of this is how we run PVC. This is how we run conduit. I'm learning all the things his way, and then if I went to another company or I went to a different journeyman, I would learn their way. And after all, all of the different ways. I took what I wanted out of there, extrapolated, okay, this is good information, this is good information, I really don't like that, okay, mm -hmm. I don't like doing it that way. Now I've developed my way, yeah. now this is my way. And then when I teach my guys, this is my way of doing things, this is how we're gonna do things, and they're gonna take my views and pull what they want out of it and your views, and they should be able to make their way. And, and the train goes around, yeah. you know. So I, I, I think we started to see a lot less skill because there, there's, we've dumbed, we've dumbed our trade down a lot. I hate to say that, but we've, we've dumbed it down a lot for the, for the sake of, of money, production, um, getting jobs. I, I, I think we've dumbed it down, down enough to where there's more installers and there is competent electricians. I agree with that. Yeah, I think that we don't have to memorize or know so much information anymore as a culture. Yep. So the, the people coming up, they just have answers everywhere. But, and that helps you in specific search situations where you have to find an answer. But I think like overall collective knowledge that you're hanging on to, I don't think there's as much there unless you're really fucking trying constantly to, mm -hmm. to gain more knowledge. But yeah, I remember being younger, like we had, when we drove around, like we had maps in our cars. And Absolutely. We would, we would try to figure out where we were going. You had to memorize, like we took a left on this and the right over here and we went like 10 miles probably and we went over here and here. And it's funny because like the older guys in the trades, they still, they'll give you an address and they know full well that you can find it on your phone, but they'll still give you this detailed story of like, all right, so you're gonna go down here, you're gonna turn left, <laughs> there's a cow there, you're gonna turn right and there's a wizard up on a hill speaking to a dog. And then after that, you know, it's like, dude, I can fucking find this place, I got GPS, yeah. but it's just so ingrained. Oh, yeah. And nowadays, like, you could go some, somewhere 10 times and still not remember where the fuck you're going because you're so reliant on that phone. Well, I started to make a, a couple of years ago, well, a little more than a couple of years, I started to make a knowledge base, Donnie's personal knowledge base. And because I have access uh, to a computer, um, most days I'm at work, or, or at least reasonably close, uh, I made mine on an Excel sheet. But it's Donnie's knowledge base. So every time that I would do something that I wasn't really familiar with, um, you know, and I had to do some research to find out or watch a video on how a particular system worked or talk to someone about how something to do something, I would make notes, you know, and, and I just made different tabs on an Excel sheet of, you know, step number one, step number two, step number three, step number four. And that way I can go back and look at it again. Okay, you know what? I wanted to reinvent the wheel every single time. Yeah. But th there's so much out there that it's, it's literally helped me retain in my head a, at least a, a rough idea of how to do something. You know, That's I, interesting. I, I, I didn't want to lose it, uh, you know, because it, it, it started when I really came into the, uh, the industrial automation and where I'm, I'm working in now because there's, there's PLCs and HMIs and there's a lot of code and frankly as an electrician, I, I can tell you about series circuits and parallel circuits and, and you know and start stop stations and push buttons and how it all works but when you start getting into code of, of reading how plc works man it, it, it's, it's overwhelming it, it's way overwhelming you know you can take a ladder diagram on steroids and it just oh my, oh my god I got it. what am i doing here yeah so it, it forced me to all right start making notes that way I wouldn't have to call my bosses or call tech support every single time for every single thing man I don't know how this works so at least on the the typical stuff how to get online with the process or how to do this or I've even got uh, stuff in in Waco because I don't I don't go after permits every single day yeah. but but there's a process to, to obtaining a permit in the city of Waco you know you have to go this step and this step and this step so uh, last time I, I pulled a permit 
I, I made notes. This is what you need to do first. It's based upon this. This is how much you're going to pay. You know, blah, 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 blah. All the way down. That way, next time I can go, oh, here's how to get a bumper. Yeah. So I don't look like a complete buffoon. I'm at the city trying to get something the lady's going to <laughs> do. Yeah. It's matter with you. Yeah. No, that's a really good idea. It's funny you mention that because I, I have binders of shit that I've held on to. I mean, like Bodine ballasts, wiring diagrams, all kinds of stuff because it's like, if I can keep this in an accessible place, it's something I'm not gonna run across every single time that I'm doing something, but there's always gonna be that one weird ballast that was wired a certain way, and so I would keep just weird shit like that. But I was always writing notes down too, like trying to conceptualize how a photo cell worked. And then like everything you run across for the most part with a black, white, and a green wire, it all operates the same way. There's like a coil inside, something that energizes and closes and open contacts. But writing all that stuff down and like trying to find patterns and stuff made it all click together for me to be like, oh, now I understand what the fuck a coil is mm -hmm. and what contacts are. But, but like taking notes is a huge thing. I think for a lot of people coming up, like taking this shit seriously, trying to get it in front of your face, wrapping your head around stuff, taking extra time to watch YouTube videos and be in forums. I mean, there's so many platforms right now with so many electricians all over the all over the world, oh, yeah. really. Oh yeah. Like not even just YouTube and watching the videos you like and talking to everybody in the comments, but like joining Discord. We have a server with 200 people in it right now, which is small, but it's like active. Just people are constantly asking questions and answering questions. And then you've got Facebook groups and you've got Reddit. There's Reddit like subreddits that all it is is electrical questions and stuff. So there's there's so much more, I feel like, information out there for people to learn. Absolutely. But the amount of people that give a shit to learn is not fully taking advantage of what's out there. Well, that, that's just it, taking advantage of them. I mean, let's just take let's take you and I, for instance. Okay, how long have you been an electrician? 12 years. 12 years. Okay, I've been an electrician 28 years. Add those together, 40 years. we got 40 years combined experience. Someone can come ask us a question about any random electrical question. we got 40 years worth of experience to, to back up our answers. Yeah. Dude, use it, man. Use, that's like a telephone. Use it. I'm right here. If you have a question, ask me. I'll, I'll do my damnedest or I'll f help find out what the answer yeah. to your question. Use what you have. Yeah. The badass thing, too, about the online communities is not only is it just two people that know, you know, I know this group of shit pretty well and you know this group of shit pretty well, but you've got groups where there's like 10,000 people. Mm. And if 10 of those people know 10 things really well, you got a huge swath yep. of the industry. Correct. Covered. But it's just, it's so silly not to take advantage of all that stuff. Um, but there's some, there are some people that just aren't that way. There's some people that just want to go to work, get a paycheck, go home, drink some beer, and that's it. Well, to be honest though, I mean, we, we do need those people. Yeah, we, we do need those people to, to, to run pipe, pull wire, install fixtures, need those people all day long. But yeah. your, your core group of guys running the projects, uh, your go-getters, uh, the people doing the production, those are the ones that, you know, everybody needs to be taught, but they're going to get the most out of it. Yeah. You know, so I, if, if you want to just be lackadaisical and, and just be whatever, well, okay, I'll use you, but there's going to come a point one day where I can't. Yeah. And, and I'll, I will, I will keep you, I will keep you employed, and I will keep you going as long as I humanly can. I mean, unless you just start, I mean, just really screwing the dog, it, it, then you have to go. But I'll keep you as long as I can. But man, if once, once it's out, and if there's a lull, which there have been plenty of lulls in the industry, uh, I don't know what to tell you. That that one's on you. It's not, it's yeah. not on me. It's on you. Oh. Yeah. I actually had a comment the other day on one of my videos, and this guy said like, "Hey, answer me honestly." Uh, I was laid off recently. There were, the company had a layoff. I was let, let go from a company. A bunch of people were, and I thought that I was going to get a call back. And he's like, honestly, man, like, no bullshit. What do you think's going on? Why haven't I got a call back? And I was like, honestly, man, they don't see enough value in bringing you back on. And he's like, that's, that's what I thought. And I'm like, it doesn't mean you're bad. Mm. It doesn't mean, you know, it could mean a whole bunch of shit. It could be politics. The guys that were friends with the owner got the, you know, the shit back and it could have been money. You could have been more expensive and somebody cheaper could have taken your place. There's like a whole bunch of different things. But I was like, I think if you honestly look in the mirror at what happened, you already know the answer as right. to why you didn't get the right. call back. And I said, I think it's just like, take this, move on with it. Don't forget it. But next time at the next company, make damn sure that you're the guy 
next time that, that, that th- th- this doesn't happen again because you provide so much value and you're doing things a different way so that they'd be out of their mind not to fucking call you back. I, I agree with that. That is something that my father taught me uh, when I was young in the trades is that make yourself valuable to wh- whomever you're working for. Yeah. Make yourself valuable enough to where they can't afford to get rid of you. Yeah. Even when it's, it's slow, they'll either find something for you to do in the interest of keeping you around, or keeping you entertained, so you don't go somewhere else. Yeah. Or, or, or they'll just they'll, they'll they'll keep you going. And and I've I've tried to live by that just by most of it's just been by busting my butt. Yeah. I mean, just as hard as hard and as long as as I could, uh, d- just so that at the end of the day I can say, man, I I, I gave you, I gave you a hundred percent. I'm spent. I'm done. If that isn't good enough, man, I'm I'm okay with it. You know, it's, yeah. <laughs> I did all that I could do. Yeah. And actually giving a shit about what you do, I think, is kind of a key component that makes that possible. I mean, it's hard for you. Like, it's one thing just to bust ass every day, but like, if you really care about what you're doing and you want to be good at it and you want to be the person that doesn't get fired, mm. I, I think that it's just you need to take a hard look at how you work and what you do and you'll know the answer. Well, it, it's always made it easier for me because I love this. Just I, I love doing yeah. it. You know, I, I never, I never wanted to strictly, you know, go through four, eight years of college. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with college, but I, that just that didn't appeal to me. I wanted. I, 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 God gave me my two hands, and, and I like working with my two hands. You call me a simpleton, call me whatever you want. I just I enjoy building cool stuff with my hands, and this has allowed me to do that for the past 28 years. Man, what's wrong with that? Yeah, I'm supporting my family still to this day. I've got two kids that are already in the electrical industry because they they enjoy building stuff with their hands, you know. And it's yeah. it's, it's it's a great it's a great place to be. I can't imagine being anywhere else. Yeah, and we got paid to learn everything Dude, that we know. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Pay, you know, earn earn while you learn. You know. Yeah. I mean, this is the greatest thing ever. I didn't have to, you know, give a hundred and twenty thousand something dollars for a college education. No, man, I got paid week one. Yeah, all the way up through now, I'm still I'm still learning every day. Yeah, I'm still learning something every single day, and I'm still getting paid every single day for it. <laughs> Golly, yeah, this is great. Yeah, the ocean of shit that there is to learn is what always kind of intrigued me the most about it. You know, like I like looking at diagrams and and windings for motors and stuff like that. Like that, just there's this technical side that I'm like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> but the amount of stuff that I don't know is far bigger than the stuff that I do know. And that's what keeps me going. It's like, oh, well, I want to figure out how this works. And, oh, how does that, if I take this apart and try to figure out, like, how does this fucking thing work? That was always cool. So I think maybe there are just some people out there that don't, that aren't like that. Do you think that it takes somebody that like that to give a shit? I, I think you definitely have to have a vested interest. It, you do. Otherwise, you know, you, if you're going to do a job, in, in my mind, if, if you're doing a job just to do it, Find something you really like to do, uh, because because you're gonna you're gonna frustrate yourself, you're gonna upset yourself, you're gonna upset your peers, you're gonna upset people above you, below you, just because you don't care. And you're not gonna be very good. Right. So so yeah. if if you if you want to be an electrician because you enjoy being an electrician, or if you want to be an electrician because you enjoy pouring concrete, maybe you should look at concrete then instead of being an electrician. Maybe that yeah. does it for you, or, or whatever it is. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy what you do. Is every day, every every single day utopia? No, we. I think we oh, all can agree to that. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have beat my head against the wall more times than I care to count. Yeah. But looking back as a whole, I've had way more good days than bad days. You know, oh, yeah. I, I, I can say that, man, this, I, I love my industry. I love what I do. I love taking care of people, you know, and, and there is something cool to be said about going to do a service call because it's a, maybe it's an older lady or an older gentleman, an older couple that don't have a particular portion of their house working and you can make it work for them. Yeah. And you see them light up and it's like, y'all have a great day. You know, yeah. if you need anything else, please give me a holler. And knowing that you, you did something for them that someone else couldn't do, but you kind of made their day. Man, yeah. that's the They're greatest so feeling ever. Grateful. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It was like the AC went out at my house. I had to get a new furnace and a new compressor the same Ugh. day. And we had been living for like five days without AC, and it was 110 out in the middle of summer. Mm-hmm. And I was just about to rip my damn hair out, my kid, my wife. And the day they came in and put all that shit in, 
I was like, I'm not waiting to pay you, dude. Here is your money. <laughs> Thank you so much. Holy shit. Like, I was so incredibly grateful. So, yeah, you get that a lot as an electrician because a lot of what you do, if you're not installing new stuff, is you're fixing yep. shit that people really, really need working badly. No, it's it's just it's just a great feeling. And, and it, yeah. it's it's been a greater feeling the older I've got the more, and the mm. more, just the more I can respect, you know, what someone else does and the hardships that they're maybe going through and to be able to take care of that for them and, and whatever that way is, a light fixture, a, a stove, a furnace, whatever, to be able to do that for them, you know, and, and help them out in a time of need is, is great. You know, I've, I've, I've needed doctors and unfortunately lawyers at times, you know, for things and someone was there to help me when I needed it. So it, it's yeah. nice to be able to be there for someone when they need it, you know? Yeah. I think it's, I think, it, I think it's cool. And again, I think we're duty bound, uh, as electricians, as just general tradesmen, to do just that, you know. Yes, we may get paid for it. Okay, I mean that's a dang it. It's a bad side effect <laughs> of doing it. But you know, it, uh, it it's still that that we need to we need to get back to where we're giving back more and doing more um, and putting reinvesting more back in our trade instead of just take 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 taking and there's yeah. nothing left for it. you. Got you got to give a little bit. Yeah. Do you think that the when you were in coming into the trades that your money went further in general in life than it does now um it's it seemed like it did uh but then again we didn't really have as much other than partying away we didn't really have as much to to waste it on i mean again there were there were computers uh you know tvs weren't weren't big plasma uh cars weren't weren't as much so yeah i guess pound for pound your money kind of did stretch and go a little further uh, th than it does now and now it seems that it's just so everything's so minute that yeah. you can you can it's gone paycheck gone yeah just yeah. like netflix that. and yeah. hulu and exactly. all, you know, all this shit so it, it feels like i'm not 34 i can't really say i have a whole lot of life experience but it seems like when i was younger there was less stuff to pay for so you were able to hang on to money a little bit more and it seemed like money was going around in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, after the recession and everything. But the 90s seemed like kind of a pump in time mm -hmm. for people to just have money in their pocket. Um, so I think even just watching how companies deal with employees, it seems like it's through scarcity. It's like we're trying to get the most amount of work out of the least amount of people that we can rather than it being having a bunch of people being able to waste a day training all of them it's mm -hmm. like no we got 300 jobs to do and we only got four guys you exactly know? Like, so it just seems like that's the way things are running but it might just be because of how our economy is and and how people are paid i mean i think we're still generally paid lower than what our cost of living is i don't think that's really changed much no i i would say you're right it's just the way things are are structured you know i i don't know when the when the turn came around but when when someone would start charging a little bit less okay the owner would go to that person to be able to do it and then in order to get the job a next job the next person would have to charge probably a little bit less mm -hmm. and then i think that we as progressed as a trade the farther that we've gone that that's what everyone's not not all of them but but a, a bulk of the 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 company owners requesting the work they, they want to pay the least for it yeah. the absolute least and and gone are the are the times of, okay, I can hire company X to do it for me. It may take them a little longer, but they're gonna do some teaching and I know I'm gonna get a quality product out of it. Now it's just, man, I'm gonna, I wanna get done as fast as I can and pay the least amount for it, end of story. Yeah. And, and I, I think that that's, that's harmed us, but we've, <clears throat> we've allowed that to happen. We've allowed that to happen. So I, I, I'm a firm believer in, in not, again, overcharging, but being fair, being very fair and competitive. You know, yeah. that because if, if I start to charge really less because maybe my overhead's a whole lot less, and then you start to charge less because your overhead's less and you still gotta beat me out of the job, 10 years are gonna go by and we're gonna end up doing ourselves more harm than good because now everybody wants it. Well, dude, I want it for 20 bucks an hour. Yeah. Well, now, now I, can no, I can no longer survive on that $20 an hour you know, and so yeah. I, I think we hurt ourselves by by cheapening. I mean, it should it should be fair, um, and, and and accurate. You know, maybe not uh, like we kind of touched on earlier. Maybe not completely global. It's the same. The light fixture is X dollars, but reasonably close. You know, so we don't we don't cheapen ourselves out of a job. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think wages. It seems like for the last fifteen years, 
in the trades have been the same. So like apprentice gets paid relatively the same cost here in town at least. Like they're gonna get paid the certain the same amount, journeyman same amount. If you look nowadays, it's the same. It really hasn't mm-hmm. gone anywhere. Maybe a buck or two here or there, but um, it doesn't seem like that's changing. But it does seem like our cost of living and our livelihoods and just how how money works in our economy is rapidly changing. So um, it'll be interesting because I think in you know, 15, 20 years, we're going to have a huge gap in the amount of people that there are to do these jobs. Absolutely. Period. You know, so I think there's going to be a lot of people out there that can charge whatever the fuck they want to charge because there's no other companies around to compete with them. Well, we're already starting to see the, the, the decline in people entering the trades with those that are leaving them. You, you don't, we don't have enough bodies to fill them. Yeah. We, we, we don't, you know, and that's, that's why it's important to really get younger kids and the younger generation interested in, in what we do, you know, because I, I can remember going to job sites with my granddad and, and going to job sites with my old man and mm-hmm. just, wow, this is cool, you know, and, and everybody yeah. knew who grandpa was, you know, because he was a, a, a superintendent and so everyone knew who he was and you got to go in the, the cool bowels or whatever building he's doing at the time you know and you get to meet so and so and you know we need to get back to that you know yeah. back to where our trade was was cool and it was respected and uh, so we don't lose it yeah you know? i agree it it feels like schools should have more of an in-depth like one-year program where you have to be uh, like i just exposed to all the trades maybe not all of them but kind of like the key construction trades at least just do a little bit here and there because I think that some kids are gonna it's gonna pique their interest and mm-hmm. they're gonna hear like holy shit I don't actually have to go to college I don't want to go to college so there's an option for me to not do that if I just like go do this fixing stuff building stuff kind of thing I don't know I think if we start at a younger age like introducing stuff like this to kids and showing it as a viable option um, rather than our entire education system being geared towards cramming kids in colleges right. You know, I just don't think that's the way for probably half the population out there. Just They just don't give a shit about college, and it's impractical. It's too expensive. Um, unless you want to be like a lawyer or a doctor or you know, NASA engineer, well, fuck yeah, go to college. Oh, absolutely. Like, that makes sense. I agree with that. But I know way too many people that have degrees that they're not using, and they, they're going to be spending that paying debt off, or they're going to be paying that debt off the rest of their life when they could have just gotten into the trades as their first choice and probably fall in love with it and avoided that whole thing. We used to have shop classes, you know, in the 70s and 80s when I was in, in school. You had shop, and you could take shop classes. And there, there were, you know, you had auto shop and, and general shop, you know, we're just working, wood, mostly woodworking stuff, you know. Yeah. But you learned at an early age that, that, that this was an option to go out there. And we, we don't see that as much anymore. Yeah. It, you know, when, when my... My son's graduated, you know, I, I, I didn't I didn't force college on him. I said, you know, look, I wish you would. You know, I wish you would have an easier life, but I'm certainly not going to make it make you go. If it doesn't, you just finished 12 years of school. If you don't want to go to, to four more, yeah. I'm drink some not, bill, right. beer and chill for a little yeah, while. <laughs> I'm not going to make you. If you want to, great. If you don't, then, you know, we'll figure something out. Yeah. And they both wanted to learn learn to do this. I wanted to, no, I, I don't really want to go to school. Okay, well, then, then then you need to find something. You need to be a productive member of society. You can't just loaf around all day. You know, and they both saw that I was in the trade, wanted to give it a shot, and they're both, both still in it. Mm. So, I mean, I, I, and I think it's great. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah I kind of got my, my uh, excitement for it from my dad. And it was the same thing. It was just going on job sites with him, and he's a handyman, so he's done everything you could ever think of so I kind of got to put tile in and see how a slab was formed and got to help frame up walls and take windows and doors out and I was like this is this is cool mm-hmm. like I'm making shit and I'm like hitting stuff with hammers and tearing shit out and <laughs> like it's cool man and I think a lot of kids a lot of people coming up would also think it was cool if Absolutely. it was something that was put in front of them as an option well and, and to, to even you know speak on that a little bit more if you're I think it's beneficial to know more than just the trade that you're in. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've, I, I did a lot of side work, uh, especially when I was coming up as an apprentice. Um, I, I did a lot of side work, you know, I'd, I'd paint walls where I could or tile, tile floors, yeah. tile, whatever, whatever I could do to make extra money. Um, 
but it has helped me unbelievably, you know, than than you know, just electrical work. You know, I I put up enough tile to know that you know, look, I need deeper P rings if, if tile's going to be there, and, yeah. and I'm I'm going to need probably a one inch plaster ring. You know, I, I've I've done enough work in the different area, you know, to know that studs are okay, 16 inches on center. That means that they're 14 and a half inches apart in between. Yeah. You know, little little things like that that have helped me immensely. Yeah. And and I'm I'm assuming with you the same way that that. Uh, you've got to learn more about different trades and it's probably helped you along in, right. in your electrical trade. Oh, definitely, man. Like to know what a plumber is going to do before mm -hmm. he's even there and to know, you know, insides and outsides, the, the different hangs for doors and, and how they frame things up, um, what the ACs guys are going to do because like the electricians and the AC guys tend to fight a lot, but so do plumbers oh, and yeah. electricians. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But just knowing what everybody's doing like helps you do your job a lot and it makes you start giving a shit about them a little bit more too because it's like, all right, I'm not going to put this here because the plumber's going to bring his stuff down and I don't want to take up the space because he's going to rip my shit out anyways and then i got to come back. But it's cool getting to, getting to do all of that. I'm actually looking for some plumbers and HVAC guys that want to do stuff like this and talk and like maybe just do a series that's like, okay, I'm an electrician, you're a plumber. What does it suck that I do that, you know, for you? And like, why do you do this? And how does plumbing work this way? And at least give some content out to electricians that is from the perspective of other trades. Man, I think that's great. That's collaboration. It'd be right cool, there. right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I mean, especially on the bigger projects, there's no, there's no need in fighting each other so much for for the little bit of real estate that we're going to have because you know yeah. the buildings build they're packing more into buildings of a smaller footprint we're just getting more crap in there and it's becoming congested and, and schedules are getting shortened and it, it's it, if we can get along yeah and all get along and 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 like you'd said no i know what he's going to do before he gets there because i've done enough of them to know that's what the plumber or the tin knocker is going to do mm -hmm. so i'm not going to do this because they're just going to tearing it out anyway and then i'm going to be mad and he's going to be mad we can all get along we can all work together maybe we'll all learn a little something out of each other's trade you know can respect yeah. each other a little bit more we can all get along yeah that always cracks me up i see pictures all the time of like apprentices or even journeymen that kind of have the, like a hot head to them uh you'll see a wall brand new finished wall painted and everything and there's no plug where there probably should be a plug right and all you see are fucking hammer yep. holes everywhere all the way across the wall and it's like dude homie i get it i totally get it like you're pissed off because the drywall guys didn't give a shit about you covered up your stuff but I think a craftsman, somebody that really cares about their craft, they'll go take a toner out, they'll hook it up, they'll get with an absolute certainty, or they'll just look and exactly. see the bow in the wall. There we and go. Like, All right, I can measure this out. Yep. Pop a small wire in there. Bing. Oh, yeah. I feel those wires moving around. It's right there, and cut it out. Like absolutely. That's what a professional does. You know that people are gonna make mistakes. People may even just cover your shit up on purpose. But like letting that phase you to where you start bashing in walls and look like a fucking idiot that doesn't know what you're doing. I don't know. I just see shit like that all the time. I see uh, HVAC guys that are just like tearing down wires because they wanted their vent right there. They smash a can out of the way to put their fucking vent there. It's like there's so much I don't give a fuck and like I'm just so focused on what I do and me and right. mine and I'll let you figure out. Not my chair, not my problem kind of thing. Exactly. I. I if we can get away from some of that, and like I said, we've got so many resources at our disposal as a, just as a society nowadays, to where I, I think we can, I think we can better the building trades and, and bring back the building trades to what it used to be. I mean, back in the, you know, in the Depression era, I, I mean, people who built things like that, they were rock stars, man. Yeah. And from iron workers to concrete guys to electricians and plumbers, and they were just. They were respected craftsmen. And you can tell, you can go look at those buildings now that are still standing there, go look at, you know, just a lot, ton of the buildings in, in, in New York or Los Angeles that have been there for, for, you know, years and years and you can walk in and go, wow, man, this is, you know, they don't build them like this anymore. Mm -hmm. And they do not, yeah. you know, that's a craftsman right there. Yeah. Yeah, it seemed like they had time too back then, like when they were doing the Empire State Building, I'm sure that there was like a certain, time frame that they wanted to get it done but 
like you see pictures of those dudes up there like walking on beams and they're you know 300 feet up mm. in the air <laughs> you're just like oh my god you're not strapped up yeah. like that's balls but they knew what they were doing they did it well and that was like how they fed their family and that was the most important thing it seemed like giving a shit about what you did kept you working absolutely and if you didn't if you weren't that guy you just weren't working but it's a good point man I, I i think we can get back i think we can get the luster back to our to our industry our industry has kind of been tarnished over i don't know i don't know how long i didn't want to guess at how long but uh we, we need to get it back and, and i think education uh education is is is, is the way to go after it because not everybody again just automatically knows how to do something you have to be taught now whether yeah. it's self-taught or sitting in front of an instructor or sitting with your mentor or two guys talking. Hell, we used to bounce stuff off one another as tradesmen. Hey man, what would you do if I get man, what would you do like yeah. this? You know, we used to bounce it off of one another. And then we used to have pride in what we did, man. I'll bet you I'm gonna whoop your ass today running this one here. I'm you're yeah. gonna get 20, 20 pictures hung up, man, I'm yeah. gonna get twenty five. We used to uh, race yeah. at it. Yeah, that shit talking you know. is my favorite too, man. And and you just don't you don't see that a lot anymore, man. I'll, I'll bet you I can put up more pipe than you can. Well, you're probably right. You probably could. It's like, dude, come on, man. Give it at least give me a, a run for it. <laughs> you yeah. know, fake it or something. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of infighting and a lot of like self pride. I notice in some of these groups too that, uh, especially on Facebook, it's just a big dick showing competition to mm. see who thinks they know more and who can make somebody feel like they know little and like that whole shit just needs to go away I think that is creating a lot of the problems in the trades because now you have a whole bunch of people that are wallflowers that are scared to speak up and say anything and they're you know just there's a lot of this whole like what do you call it peacocking I guess for no good reason it's not like they're posting stuff that is really really good that is showcasing talent they're posting hateful things to try to make other people feel small so that they feel bigger it's not even you know it'd be one thing if, if somebody was posting some stuff that was really terrible and then you posted something that was like boom check this out you know and almost a challenge but like a like a friendly way of of critiquing somebody or, or trying to teach them something but it's like it's not teachable what people are doing online to each other is it's not teaching. It's just fucking hating, and it's trying to make people feel small. Yeah, for, to what end? I, there is no end. And the more buddies that they get to make people feel small, and the more guys they get in, they're like, yeah, yeah, what he said. It's this childish fucking playground, playground shit. So I think we need not only better education and more education, we need to create like a culture of people wanting to learn, but I think we also need people in front of cameras talking about quality and about giving a fuck and about treating people right and just have some positive messengers out there doing this stuff. Absolutely. I'm, man, I'm on board. Sign me up. Sign me <laughs> All up. All right, so I'm going to set you up a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. No, I, I just, I, I enjoy giving back. I enjoy doing what you just said, talking about people, building people up. Is there a time to to kind of throttle them back when they do something bad? Absolutely. Yeah. But you got to build them back up. You, yeah. you have to you have to build more than knock down, otherwise oh, yeah. you're going backwards. There's definitely a time for an ass chewing. Absolutely. So that's not what I'm saying at all. Like, don't be afraid to like get on to people when it's absolutely necessary. But yeah, you're right. Like, I look at it with my son. I, I've built his entire lifetime of putting in respect. Mm. So that when I have to deliver something hard and bring the hammer down on him, he respects what I have to say. He may not like it, may not be popular, right. but he fucking listens. Yep. And then afterwards, I'm like, all right, so this is what you learned. And this is why things are this way. And he gets it. It's not just me being an asshole to him right. all the time, thinking right. that that's actually raising him. That's a teachable moment. It's, yeah. it's, it, uh, I, I agree with you. That's... There's a there's a time for 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 praise and and there's a time for for butt chewing. I mean, there, there's certainly a time for both. But you've got to, if someone, I guess what I'm getting at is, if someone does a good job, don't be afraid to tell them, hey man, great job, pristine job, that looks really good. Or even if somebody completely just corndorfs something, you know. Corndorfs. Wow. Yeah, you know. Just, <laughs> you got some funny words, man. I know, I know, I, do. I like your words. If someone can just just screws something up so bad, you can probably find something in there. Yeah. To, to, to bring it back up a little bit. All right, man, probably shouldn't have done this or this or this or this, but hey, I'll tell you what, man, the strapping on that pipe, excellent job. Yeah. The strapping on it is great. I right, need to work a little bit on the bending or, or whatever it is, you know. Just yeah, most get of the time, whatever you just said was great, 
they're going to be like, oh, and they're going to keep doing that thing that mm-hmm. way because that was the one thing they yeah, took away from. Absolutely, them. you you got to build them back up. If you're going to beat them down, which is fine, you got to you got to bring yeah. bring them back up a bit. Yeah, I also on the you know converse converse inverse, inverse. side of it, uh, I think they're the generation of people coming up are a lot softer people in general oh, yeah. than people were a oh, long yeah. time ago, and so I think you've got this kind of chasm between. These guys that were apprenticing under really fucking harsh people, mm. and they didn't have a choice because they either got the job or couldn't find a fucking job. They had to just take it. But they were brought up in this really rough fucking way. And then you've got people like now that we just everybody's got to have their rights, and there's certain words you can and can't say, or else like the whole fucking world's gonna come down and destroy you. There's this big difference in the type of people, but it's these people training these people. Right. And so it's kind of dangerous. There needs to be like a middle ground and an understanding from both of where everything came from and where we're trying to go. But I think that that is a, just another thing that creates like a gap and a weakness in our, our trade. I think we can have that though. You know, there's, there, there's a lot of people I've been noticing that say, okay, we should, we should, we should, we should. And there's a lot of people that are saying that we shouldn't, we shouldn't, but we need to get more to the middle of that we're doing. Like you're just saying, you know, I think we can do it. Yeah. I, I think we can do it. We, we, we've certainly gotten away from a lot of things. We can get ourselves back there. Yeah. Like they taught us, they taught me in the industry, you know, look, there's nothing that you can't screw up, Donnie, that we can't fix. It may cost money right. and it may cost time and it may not be very fun, but trust me, you can't, If even if you completely annihilate that fixture putting it up, maybe we gotta go buy another one but we'll put another fixture up there. Don't, don't worry about it. So you don't yeah. need to be scared about doing it. I can't, there's nothing that I can't do that I can't fix, even if I completely screw it up. So take a chance, take yeah. a chance. We've, we've, we've gotten our industry where we've got it. We can get it back. We can get it back. We just have, just have to do it. And, and I, I think you, you are an excellent person to show that via your instruction and via your, your attitude and your desire for what you're trying to accomplish is is awesome. I, I and I wish more people would get on board. You know, not that there isn't a lot, but we need to get more of them on there doing just that and we can we can turn this around, man. Oh dude, yeah, I would love more than anything if like tomorrow ten people came up with electrician YouTube channels and one of them was like a day in the life of an industrial electrician and every single day all they did was talk about stuff and teach people and show like this is quality this is not you know and then somebody all they do is custom homes they got a youtube channel and somebody does you know like i would i would sit and watch all of these things all day every day but we need more people that aren't so afraid to be judged by the the people that are the talking voices of the industries in these groups like there's a lot of fear in presenting yourself and showing your quality and being like, hey man, check this panel out that I did. Cause you're just gonna have wolves, you know, like, oh, this is not a good, blah, blah, blah. But I think like, we just need more people that can step up. We really do. Absolutely. Uh, and and I, I think I think we can do it, you know, yeah. and you know, I, I'm not a, a big public speaker. Public speaking scares the life out of me, it does. So even, even sitting here talking with you on, that camera right there is is it's is, just a camera it, dude. But nobody it, on the other end of that camera though, <laughs> there is a lot of people um but you know what the, this industry is not going to better itself it's not going to fix itself so if, if me being uncomfortable in front of the camera maybe i can change one person's mind or, or improve one person's life okay and then that person can maybe improve one person's and 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 on and on and on then then, then okay that's what we're supposed to be doing here I, I know we can turn it around. I, I, I know we can. Um, we're, we're all big boys and girls in this industry. Uh, we're professionals. You know, we, we are professionals. We're pros. We, we can do it. I think so, too. You know, I mean, it, it, and it, it needs to happen. Because um, I, I, didn't, I, didn't I didn't work as hard as I did coming up and after I came up as, as a journeyman to just let it go. I, I, did, yeah. I did not do that. No, uh-uh. No way. No way. Yeah, man. Yeah, I care too much too, man. I, I care about uh, just people as a whole. I think like a, the messaging that we have on these screens every day, um, what we have available to consume our attention with. Um, I think we need better choices or, mm-hmm. or more options. We just need some more and better options. Um, 
but I think I think that is a big part of the change. Uh, I think the the inner, you know, not fighting, like kind of treating this trade as a family, like you said, mm -hmm. and actually buying into that and believing it, um, training people better, um, and education. Like I really think that's there's it's not more difficult than that. It's just a lot of pieces. But I think if every single person chooses to just give a fuck and try to train the people under them and realize like they were climbing up a rope one time too and somebody Absolutely. offered them a fucking hand up the yep. bridge and realize that hey man now that you're up turn around instead of just being like ha ha fuckers and taking off <laughs> right it, we just need a change of attitude of people so um i'm up to the challenge though man like i'm not going anywhere i'm gonna be here for a while i don't really have like a a major plan of anything i'm not i don't have a goal for this i'm just kind of doing it one day at a time that's the best the beauty of it though i mean it's fluid and it's ever-changing and and it, and it can do that and it's still helpful and beneficial to do that so yeah i, I think it's it's cool that it's fluid never gets boring right yeah oh no no never boring no. Right? <laughs> <laughs> never boring no i need a lot of things though <laughs> i need some help <laughs> uh jackie and i try to do everything ourselves and it's it's working up to a certain point but i feel like um, things are growing and opportunities are coming my way like from so many different angles that I have to have a lot of discernment about what I'm doing and who I'm doing things with but what I really need is somebody to be like here dude here's 20 acres of the building on it just have it that would be nice <laughs> cool alright step one um, but no like I need a person to do the website I don't know what I'm doing it looks kind of half assed because I don't really know what I'm doing with it and I need somebody that knows how to build servers and like do tech kind of shit and I think I could probably find a lot of volunteers to just help out with stuff. And it seems like there are people that want to volunteer their time and whatever it takes to do this because they believe in just trying to help each other out and like teach shit. So if any of y'all are interested in uh, being a part of this whole shit show that I'm putting on, <laughs> please leave some comments below. <laughs> um, but no, you've offered to help too. And I think that that's, that's amazing. Um, that you even want to, and that you'd be willing to write articles or whatever. Absolutely. Again, I, I didn't. I didn't work as hard as I did, and you didn't work as hard as you did to just sit back on my laurels and let it go. No, absolutely not. I'm not. I'm not that. I'm not that mentality kind of person. I just. I'm not. If if I get here, okay, it's still. I'm still not satisfied. I want to be here. Okay. Well, then I'm gonna go go up here. And when I get here, I'm probably not gonna be satisfied for too long with there. I would like to go here. You, you know yeah. what I mean? And so I'm always gonna be constantly going and going. And that's just that's just who I am. And this this is a, gr a great opportunity to be able to better better an industry that that I belong to and that I believe in. So it, it's it's great. It's almost it is work because you know I mean it's well you know it's 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 hard work but but it's good gratifying work. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I put in, what, like 13 fucking hour days every day doing this. I've been doing this for three years. Like, there's a reason I'm doing it because I enjoy it. You know, it's not, it's not really that, um, that it's a pain to do it. So I think being that you love what you've mm. done this whole, for your whole career, it makes it really easy to try to turn around and, and help people. It, may, it makes it a lot easier. It, it, it does, you know, it, if you, if you struggle at, at your your given profession, whatever that profession is, if you struggle, then maybe it's not a right fit. Um, not, yeah. not saying that, like we talked earlier, that every day is utopia, because it's really not. I mean, we have good days and bad days. But if, you, if you're just really passionate about it, and it, it just, it works. I mean, in the, in the simplest thing, I mean, I, I'm partly passionate about electrical work, because there's no building, really, that, that, that doesn't operate on electricity. To have a phone, you, you, probably, you got to have some kind of power source somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to have a computer, you got to really have some place to plug it in, otherwise you're just going off the battery and it ain't gonna last long. So we have to have electricians, we have to, to make it go, you, you know? Yeah, our whole society requires absolutely have electricians. So it's, yeah. it's never, it's going to be a trade that is here. Mm -hmm. It's not going away, it's here. So it's evolving at a breakneck speed you know the, we're, we're seeing you know fixtures powered by ethernet poe i don't know if you've ever seen those before mm -hmm. power over ethernet uh you can have fixtures that are lit up by you know cat six cables oh that, i've seen that they're in that, commercial they're starting to that scares that. me that that, yeah. that scares me that to think things like that um partly because you know i, I again i i'm as a as a licensed electrician i'm a bit biased 
But you don't have to have a license to install that. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, but if it's coming out of 277 to, you know, like any of the modules or anything that's run as a part of that whole system, you do need to have for that a part, yeah. yeah. But if you got you got you're linking together fixtures, I can have kind of any Tom, Dick, or Harry in there, slinging. Yeah, fucking let them have that work then. <laughs> <laughs> what about these big, you know, uh, thousand amp switch gear that need electricians? You know, there's all this big industrial machinery. Like, there's so much that things are not going that way with. Oh yeah, I still oh, think there's a massive need, and for the next. 50 years even if we get super technologically advanced and we have all these solar farms and wind farms and we get like super green i still think we need a shitload of electricians out there doing you have to all the big stuff absolutely you know i've got there's a, a couple of contacts i'm on linkedin uh mike and i'm gonna butcher his last name vertevelt vertevelt oh man i hate it. mike v out of california mike v all right He's uh, he's big into solar, and and I look at his installs, and it, it's it's quality quality installs um, solar wise, but it's still electrically based. You still have your disconnects, you still have your conduit, you still have your wire, you still got inverters, so you're gonna need electricians to be able to, if nothing else, hook up that end of it to stick yeah. it back into the, the grid, however it's gonna go back in there, or or wind generators, you know, that there's, at some point it's gotta come down that turbine and hit some kind of piece of switch gear to where it's gotta distribute it back out. You're gonna need sparks for that. It, yeah. it, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to have it. So I don't see our trade going anywhere. It's, it's only, it's only gonna, it's gonna evolve. Yeah. It's not gonna change entirely. I mean, electricity kind of really only works a certain amount of ways, you know, you can only manipulate it so much, but I mean, it, it uh, it's going to evolve, but it'll always be here, and, and I'm, I'm excited that I'm a, a part of it. Yeah, I could see in the next like couple of decades, things really changing to be more low-voltage based for sure, but more networked. Um, so the average electrician, I think while they're going to need to hang on to the skills of the old, which is what we're doing now, I think integrating a lot of these wireless systems, low voltage lighting, mm. you know, solar, there's a lot of things even programming wise, um, lighting control, I think a lot of that's going to start getting really, really intricate and really specialized and I think a lot of the people that are stuck with the old ways are going to fight it fucking hard tooth and nail and then there's going to be a lot of these specialists that only know how to do this really intricate stuff and I think it's going to be a value but um, I think for being an electrician, it would like to know both is really, really valuable. Um, because to to be a part of something that not very many people can do, that's what we already do. That's mm. kind of our shit. Mm -hmm. You know, we're electricians. Um, but trying to know as much about every single thing that you can, instead of only just sticking in one field, I think that's better. Because if that one field goes down, you know, if if we have another housing crisis, well, a housing crisis doesn't necessarily affect industrial jobs. Right. Maybe right. a little bit. The people that work there have houses, but um, if you're more spread out, I find that like when we have times of lulls, we have recessions, you know, remodeling goes up and then construction goes up. And if you kind of know how to work all of it, you're square for your career and your family. I think that's just a better way to go. But it goes back to education, like really taking the time to, to study and to figure out more of this stuff. Yeah, so. you got to make yourself more valuable. You know, oh, and, and if you can, if you can learn to work in, if it's the same industry, the electrical industry, but a different facet of the electrical industry, you, those lull times that you're talking about won't affect you as much. You can hop over and do this until your former one gets back, or maybe not. Maybe you just hop and stay over there. Or, or it just, it's well-roundedness, well-rounded yeah. instead of rat holing into. Okay, I'm, I'm only doing gear. I'm only going to switch gear because I, you know, I, I'm real good at running a four-inch pipe, and that, that's great, but. There's a lot more to the electrical industry than run a four inch conduit. Yeah. Learn learn past it's that. Oh shit. Yep. <laughs> Plenty of ocean. So I'm really excited about all of the women getting in the trades. Like there's a there's a massive thing happening right now where there's a lot of uh, there's a, a woman that I talked to that's a master electrician on the East Coast and she's a part of a bunch of different trade organizations and things for trying to get more women in the trades and I think that that is cool as shit because it's it's the same problem with engineering you know like there's a lot of male electrical engineers but there's a certain way that females think that it's different than men and they are able to work just as hard I know there's a lot of 
like back and forth, well, they're not as strong as us and all this bullshit. But I'm really excited to see women stepping into these roles because every woman that I know that's become an electrician fucking loves it. Mm -hmm. Like absolutely loves the aesthetics, the, you know, whatever. Everybody gets something different out of it. But I'm really excited to see where that ramps up to and where it goes over the next decade or so. Man, I agree with you. I've, uh, I've obviously known far more male electricians than females, but uh, one of my one of my best friends, Paul, his his wife Sue is is an electrician and is literally she is probably one of the smartest sparks I know. Mm. I mean that that woman is brilliant, brilliant, and it adds just a completely different way of the way she looks and analyzes things. Yeah. Than, than I do or you do than or than anybody else. She just looks at things different. She's just brilliant when it comes to that. It's like Sue, man. She's she's just a rock star. Yeah. And she she doesn't she she will run four inch pipe with the rest of us. She will can run three quarters pipe. You know, just like she, she can do anything that we all can. Yeah. Just brilliant electrician. This uh, brilliant won't take no for an answer. Will work as hard as any guy I know. And, I, and I've met a, a few lady electricians, but they're all super smart, super smart, and, and look capable of looking at things through a different lens and a different filter than you and I would look, or someone else would look at it. Just because they don't weigh as much as we do and aren't physically as tall as we are or potentially not as grip strength strong, it doesn't matter. You use what you have, and if, and if you can use that, that's that, that's what drives the rest of it is this yeah. so, I mean there there's leverage points you can use a little bit different or because you got a big burly 250 pound guy over there maybe get him to do the heavy work and you can do the thinking work yeah there's nothing wrong with that yeah that's I think the best thing about having somebody that knows their stuff on a job site they don't have to wear tools because they can have five or six hands doing mm -hmm. all of the work and figuring out what each person is the best at and having them focus on that but yeah, female electricians, I've, the, the ones that I've seen that have made it really far and that have been with us for a long time, like they have an outstanding mind and their ability to troubleshoot. They see problems quicker than we do. We spend a lot of time like over there smoking a cigarette trying to figure out a problem. And like, you fucking idiot, it's right there. What? Damn. All right. Shit. Yep, exactly. So so, make, us, make us look bad. So yeah. <laughs> That's our goal in life. You women's yeah, making right. us look bad. Jackie's laughing. <laughs> Um, well, let's wrap this whole shindig up. Um, All right, man. You got any advice that you could say to, to anybody out there that's young and thinking and, or old and thinking about getting into the trades? I, I do it. That's just two words, do it. Get it. Get into it. Uh, there, there are so many avenues you can go, as you well know, industrial electricians, commercial electricians, residential electricians, uh, specialists in different areas. If, if building cool things and being on the cutting edge of technology and using your hands interests you, go for it, man. Yes, I couldn't say that better it. myself. It is like the, the the tinkering, man. I think for any of you that are really curious to do something that you don't think college is a viable option for you and you like building things, putting stuff together with your hands, if that at all intrigues you or you like to put in work and then see at the end of the day like, holy shit, I just did a whole bunch of stuff and like I hooked up power and it all works and I've changed my environment. Um, it's cool, man. I really, I really think that you get something out of it. So, um, Don, thanks so much for coming hey. on. You go by Donnie. Like, do, do your friends uh, call you Donnie? I, most of them call me Donnie. I will answer to Don, Donnie, Donald. It doesn't matter. All right. I'm, I'm pretty start calling you Donnie. Yeah, I see you on LinkedIn as Don Metcalf. That's, and that's all right. I, I will answer. I will answer to any one of them. All right. <laughs> any one of them. Man, I appreciate you having me on here. It, it's been awesome to talk to you guys. Uh, I think you're doing great things again. Uh, Thanks, man. I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. You, you know, I mean, just uh, someone who, who who gives a crap about the industry. I'm 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 super stoked to see where this goes. Me too. I bet, <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Time will tell. All right, dude. All right, man. Good having you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.